All right, YouTube. This is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. Over the last several months since this uh, migrant crisis has gotten really out of hand, and people, you know, they're on different sides of the aisle as it relates to it, but there should only be one side for us, and that's the side of taking care of our own. Now, they're busting the migrants into Detroit and they're getting the services that's needed for the people that live in Detroit, the homeless in Detroit, the citizens of Detroit. Taxes are paying for immigrants to come in while, while the people of Detroit suffer, their, their community suffer, and nothing has, be, has been done about it. And at some point, we got to take care of our own people. You know what I mean? We can't, obviously, we see we can't depend on government. You know what I'm saying? I look at my comments when I did my other video about the migrant crisis. You got a lot of people was in my comments talking about, y'all voted for the Democrats. Y'all deserve it. But I know these people are Caucasian people, and they think everybody that's black is a Democrat and vote for Biden. You know what I mean? And they come off like, oh, that's what you guys get. Okay, they trolling me, but I want you to see some of what is really going on in Detroit. You know what I mean? A lot of our homeless have mental health issues. A lot of our homeless live under the viaduct. A lot of our homeless can't get the service because nobody is reaching out to give it to them. Now, stick with me and watch this. This is for fair use in the 1976 Copyright Act for commentary and educational purposes. Look closely at what you're seeing, please. I'm gonna take my son's place, Carolyn. Oh yeah. We're here. In, we're here in Detroit. <coughs> yeah. You're out here homeless. Yeah. Tell me about it. Okay. I thought being homeless, I had the best family in the world. I thought I'd been home because I wanted to be. Because I got tired of my 13 brothers telling me what the hell to do. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. When I lost my twin on 14 West Grand Boulevard, 86, Christmas Eve, I told all of them to kiss my ass. Went up on the porch with my dog, told them to kiss my ass. No, uh -uh. And then they didn't want to accept because I had a baby. Okay, so you kissed my ass. No. I'm not, I'm not going to change my life for you, nobody else. And when you mess up a woman, man, or a baby can help yourself, you still kiss my dick, dig my mammy up and kiss her ass. I really mean that. And no matter what, baby, I don't change. If I change, you wouldn't even like me. Because you'd be a contract for body, but I don't retire. And I'm not going to change for you. Only thing I'm going to change for is the man up there in the sky. And you remember that ladder that he knocked down? I was out and clam that motherfucker, baby. I, 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 I want to ring to you. All he had to do is ring, ring his hand out. And I'm going to bite that motherfucker and just clam to pull me on up. God is good. It's right. And I wish I was married to him. I, every day, I, I pray. And I, I've been homeless now because I want to for two years. Because when I was at the rehab, they be stole all my shit, you know. You first the toy shit come up from the toy. Do a do baby. Y'all put that motherfucker in there too. Baby, and, and it's sad to say you spend all your money on a rehab, put up your uh three hundred dollars for food, and then somebody else come in there and steal it. Steal food out of the refrigerator. What else you wanna know? So how do you survive out here? How I survive? I survived going to the Burger King. I survived going up here to ask them for something and give me a piece of cardboard. And then uh, Second Baptist in Greek town, they give out boots and underwear and everything uh, once a week. We take I take showers like twice a week. Dude, God is still good. I don't care how you look at it. God been so good to me, baby. I don't give a damn if you don't like me or what. But I've been homeless, and um, you ain't got to give me shit. 
Where'd you sleep last night? Well, I sleep at on the ground, but up here in the grave. Right across from the uh, Louisiana. You know, you know where, 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 um, right up there on grass. Right there, because the heat was coming out and I was cold. And sometimes I sleep behind 36th District. The police woke me up yesterday morning. I was so mad with that moment. The sergeant woke me up. I said, you know what? I said, sorry, this guy, why in the hell did you wake me up? Cause I know you don't have to leave him. I mean, Miss Green, I know you don't have to leave him to nine. But he said, you got to get up because the judge, the judge, you know, well, you tell Judge Matt that I said to go to hell. Because he was down here with a special motherfucker. Yeah, so, I mean, you know. What's, you know your, I, what's your future like? My future? My future is that I'm on oxygen. But I, I got a home to do but I wish not to go to it because I don't like nobody telling me what to do. So you live out here by choice. I live by so, out here for choice because I don't feel like telling, you know what? I'm I'm paying rent and you, you gonna tell me what the fuck to do in my own? No, you keep that motherfucker sticking in your head. I don't care if you was how huge. Everything look good, it's not good. How huge, look in the new dictionary now, he was, pres he was President Kennedy back up, baby. And guess what? I found out in a long run that President Kennedy had something to do with how he was deaf. If he had three wishes, what would they be? To straighten out life, to give to the homeless, and to have my way to bring my son back. That's it. Goodbye now. That's one story in Detroit. And even though she homeless and clearly she got issues, she still can think enough to say that she wants to give back to the homeless. Let me show you something else. Bear with me. Nobody should have to pay for spam call protection. That's why we make I've got my GED since I've been here. Transform lives. showing you something you typically don't see our defender cameras going Hold underneath on, those viaducts you drive by every day to show you where the homeless live these uh, images are very real tough to see but we're not only exposing the problem local four defender karen drew uh, showing us what's being done here and in the suburbs to help people who are homeless karen's locked downtown now in an area that uh, where many homeless people panhandle right there near the lodge freeway not too far from the studio karen that's right. We know there is a homeless issue in our city. And as you said, Devin, this is a popular area. You can see that gentleman over there holding up a sign asking for money. Now, the more we talk to the homeless, they said many times they don't want to go into shelters. And that causes another host of problems. But we also discovered a shelter that is really making some major changes and transforming lives. You're looking at where many of the city's homeless live under viaducts. They stack the donations they get. But as we take a closer look, you see other items that have been stolen, like this driver's license. The same individual that's starving for their next meal, that's got an addiction problem underneath here, may be the same individual that does whatever it takes to get, to get money. To get money. Officer Stephen Shank of DPD knows the area and knows the homeless well. They don't have to sleep in these type of environments, um, but they're choosing daily to come back. We have shelters that are serving continental breakfasts to lunch hours to having the ability to shower and change, get a fresh. He's lying. <clears throat> Anybody from Detroit knows that a lot of them don't want to go to the shelters that they have in Detroit because they're filthy. You know what I mean? For our people. 
They're disgusting. Bed bugs, lice, crime. But let me let you listen to his story, what he, how he's telling it. Pair of clothes on. He warns of the dangers of living on the streets and how it needs to be cleaned up. The trash and rats have become an issue. Our ambassadors are here today to uh, clean up under the underpass, uh, to remove all the debris that um, you guys see here, which is really unhealthy for any human being and any of us. The smell is very horrible due to the urination smell. Um, is We have to have the mask for our protection. Um, whatnot. We don't want anybody getting sick, sick or anything or coming down with any type of disease. So what is working for the homeless? We need to visit downtown Pontiac and see what Grace Centers of Hope is doing. On this day, a group of volunteers from a local realtor company are here gardening, mulching, and making this new William A. Davis Women and Children's Homeless Shelter really feel like home. Wow! You hear that sound? Kayla Kaplinger is a mom of two. Homeless, she's now living at Grace Centers. I've been here eight months. Okay. I go to job readiness next Monday. That's not all. I've got my GED since I've been here. Kayla stopped taking drugs eight months ago and was able to get her children back from foster care, all because she committed a year of her life to Grace Centers. You see a lot of moms with kids like living in cars. This is a place, I often say we're loving people back to life. Um, a cold check from Washington doesn't help a broken heart. Pastor Clark gave us a tour of the new women and children's homeless shelter. The largest uh, part of our ministry is actually with women and children. This shelter is different because it doesn't just offer food and a place to sleep, but it offers a transformation of life to providing free daycare, to job training, to drug rehab. And look at the amenities, a bathroom for the homeless that rivals a hotel, living spaces where they can spend their time in dignity and classrooms where they can learn and focusing on um, the real problem, which is drug use. Pastor Clark says, give the homeless a hand up, not a hand out, and you will see change. We've just, I've accomplished a lot. Yeah. So it's been a great experience. Definitely some inspiring stories there. Ribbon cutting for that center tomorrow at 10 a.m. There'll be an additional 104 beds to help the local homeless, specifically women and children. Back to you. Well, Karen, there's a lot to like about that new center, and it's clearly very needed, but the need is so much greater, right? You know, Devin, that brings up a good point. It is. I mean, we're grateful for those beds, grateful for that center, but last year, just that center alone had to say no, could not allow 8,500 women and children who needed a place to stay. So this is an issue in Pontiac, in downtown Detroit. So definitely more attention needs to be spent on that. 8,500, exactly. That's really oh. eye-popping. All right, Karen. 8,500 8, immigrants that are coming in and took up that space that could have been used for the people of Detroit. Let me show you something else. Hello, my name is Jim Caviezel, the actor who played Jesus in the movie The Passion of the Christ. Now, tonight, seeking a home and... What I want you to see is the contrast between how some ethnic groups get better treatment, better services. But we're going to look at Freedom House in Detroit, in the city of Detroit, and who they're making beds for. Look at this. Tonight, seeking a home and pleading for help. You can see people arrive here that have had no other place to go. Um, and they've spent days without eating. Refugees and asylum seekers from around the world making difficult journeys in search of safety and ending up in Detroit. Thank you so much for joining us for 7 Action News at 10. I'm Simon Shea Kett. Tonight, a plea from a local shelter dedicated to helping refugees and asylum seekers. The shelter says right now they are seeing a surge in people fleeing danger across the globe and ending up on our doorstep. 7 Action News reporter Tierra Braddock in Detroit tonight. And Tierra, telling us how you can help. 
The Freedom House here on Detroit's southwest side serves refugees and asylum seekers. Recently, the organization has seen a surge in the number of people they help. Now they are asking for support from the state, the city, and community members. Our average was about 15 people a week seeing new people arrive, um, but in most recent days, we've had 16 people arrive in one day sometimes. Elizabeth Orozco Vasquez is the CEO of Freedom House. She says a few months ago, the organization started to see an influx of people in need. We're seeing people from all over the world, including um, the Congo, um, Angola. Um, we're seeing people from, you know, Uganda still coming through. We're still seeing people from South America, Venezuela, Colombia. An asylum seeker who wanted to remain anonymous for safety reasons says he is grateful to be staying at the Freedom House. He says it would be really hard um, and he would be out on the streets because he has nobody here in the U.S. Freedom House is currently over capacity. Every room in the house is filled and people are even sleeping on cots in the hallways. As we get new people, um, I find that my team has a hard time saying we have no more room. Orozco Vasquez says her team has been working with other shelters to help place the overflow of people who show up on the Freedom House doorstep. We are alerting the state as well as the city of Detroit. Um, we're in communication with them on what we're seeing. Um, I know that the city is trying to open up more shelter beds. However, it's not enough. Is there anything the public can do to help you all support the people in need? Absolutely. Um, please donate. Um, and, you know, typically I would say bring food, bring, you know. Why would we donate to help the home is coming from other countries when we're not donating to help our own people, to help our own? See, this is one big mind game. If you look at the, the news uh, clips that I've shown you, Look at the contrast and compare it to the fact that thousands of more immigrants, migrants, or whatever you want to call them, are coming to the city daily. Daily. We got to help our own. We got to help each other. Let's finish letting Vasquez talk. Right now, we're seeing people arrive with various needs. So right now we would appreciate even a five dollar you know donation would be great orozco vasquez says eventually she would like to expand freedom house so the organization can serve more people but until then she'll continue to find alternative housing options for the people they serve reporting on detroit's southwest side tiara braddock seven action news with spot me i can overdraft up to 200 I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> what is this big rush to help migrants who illegally came into this country when nobody is going out there to try to help and service the residents and the people of Detroit? You know, this story with these, with these immigrants is getting deeper and deeper. You got to read between the lines. And they like to say, okay, a lot of people in Detroit did vote for Biden, but they didn't vote for this. You understand what I'm saying? And if they choose to vote for Biden again, they'll probably get more of this times 10 with the thousands of immigrants coming in to take up the resources and services that the Detroit citizens need. So, I think we got to find ways to help our own. It's a lot of people that got family members that's homeless. You know what I mean? And they go to church. You know what I mean? And, and they help everybody in the church. And they hold hands. And they sing. And they praise God. But they really hate and despise their neighbors and their family members. We got to learn to do for self or suffer the consequences. Sign to you out of Detroit. Peace. Keep your head on the swivel. Like, share, and subscribe.